So our next step is going to be to do the sewing. We're going to sew along the sections and we're going to create a stack. So each section is going to be placed on top of the other one and you're going to work from your back section to your front section. So you have your needle and thread. I am using sewing thread that I made into twine. And you can use sewing thread, you can make use any kind of fine knitting yarn. It's sort of, uh, if you use sewing thread, it's too thin on its own. So what I done is that you take a piece of thread and you make it into a loop. You place the end of the loop around something like a like a, a chair leg or a door handle or something and you twine it all in one direction. You twine your two ends together in one direction like this. Just go 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 like that. And you take it off whatever you put around and you fold it in half like that and you let go and this sort of makes a twine that you can use as a sewing thread okay so you are starting from the back you start with your back section and I'm gonna be working on this this facing this way because of the camera but of course, when you're doing it from yourself, it's much easier if you do it facing yourself. I'm going to be using a paperweight. And what you do is you find the middle opening of your gathering. Place it down and it's easy to work with it. I like to work with it towards the edge of the table here. And you get your needle and your thread. And this is a bit longer than it's practical. I've been taught that you can start with a thread that's about as long as the length of your arm. And that's going to make it not too kind of, that, that way you won't get all snarled and tangled on you. Um, okay, so you start here. And you start at the bottom little notch that you did. And using your needle, you go from the outside in. And you can leave a little tail here so that you have a bit of excess string. You go from the inside here, you go out. And you go back in again. And you leave this thread on a little loop, maybe enough to get a finger through. You find your second sewing station, you go outside. And you come back in again here. And sometimes you just gotta like wiggle a little to find the correct. Sometimes you have to go from the inside out just to check sort of where where your sections line up. And again, you want to just leave like a little a little loop here, for the second go around, and then you come out at the head of your section. All right, so when you've done that, you can add your sewing stations. So you have your two little bag handles or your little flat ribbons or whatever it is you're using. And you're putting them into the loop like that. And you can pull 
the tail taut and that will hold the sewing station in place. And you do the second thing, same thing up here. Just hold it in place like that. Uh, this paperweight is too light, that's why my sections keep moving. And when you pull it tight, make sure you pull it in the direction of the section rather than out towards from the section. So if you pull it like this, um, it's much better because if you pull it towards outwards, it might tear the paper. Okay, so that's your first section. You get your second section. You find the middle, place it on top of the first so that you make a stack. You make sure that you have your markings lined up. Sometimes if you place it the other way up, your markings kind of get out of get out of the correct alignment. So you want to make sure you have your markings made up, lined up like that. And it's basically the same thing. We're just going to go down towards ourselves this time. So you come in here, you come out there, come back in again, go out, come back in, go out. And when you come here, you're going to use this tail end to make a knot so that your two sections stay together. And again, it can be helpful to kind of look on the inside a little to make sure Everything's lined up. And this is also where it's helpful if you have a blunt needle. I've got a pointy one and I prick my fingers all the time. So you can just go, okay, well, yeah, no, that's, that's where you're at. Okay, so when you have your two sections together like this, you can check that you have the tension correct. Basically, you can do that by pulling here on the inside and then pulling there. And if you want to check your tension, what you can do is you can use your fingernail and you can just snap the thread like it's a string or something. And if you got a good kind of snap on it, that's the correct tension. Okay, so then you have your end here and your tail end. So you're back at the here, at the tail end of the section. You've got the tail end of your sewing thread and you got your working thread here. And it's very easy. You just make a knot like a normal simple knot tie them together and we'll make sure they don't move too much you can put your heavier paper weight on yeah tie them together and you can make a double knot like that and there you go that's your two first section and then you're going to continue like this with the rest of the stack and between each section you're going to do something called a kettle stitch and I'll show you now how to do the rest of the sewing but basically you're going to use this pattern all the way through. So again you put your next one on, you check that your markings line up, you put your paper weight on so it just doesn't move Find your end. And you go 
into the middle. Okay, you go into the middle, you come out again, around your sewing support. And your sewing support and out here at the head. Okay, and you can check your tension. Right. Okay, and you can place your paperweight back on. Okay, so we're gonna make the kettle stitch. And kettle stitch is very easy. So you're here on the third section, you're going to take your needle, you're going to go down here between the second and the first section, and when you've gone through, you're going to go under the little stitch that you made there, that's where you're going to go through, and you're going to loop, there's going to be a loop here, and you're going to loop your thread through so that you make a little knot and you're going to make this knot in between each of the sections so that means that when you've put them all together they won't move individually they'll all be tied off at the end of each section so as you go up you're going to sew this way back and you're going to go in between the second and the third make your kettle stitch you're going to sew the next section go this way up and then you're going to make your kettle stitch between the third and the fourth and so on. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew the rest of this book now.
And if you, if your thread, if you run out of thread, you run out of thread about halfway through the book, you just kind of, you make sure that you either you sew until the nearest kettle stitch or you go back to the nearest kettle stitch where you had thread and you can just make like a little knot around the kettle stitch and move from there. So that's sort of how you, how you can um, spice together your sewing basically. So and now's the final section. Make sure it's all lined up. And you okay, so this one you can pull a bit more. So and got your final section. Then you do your final kettle stitch. Like that. And if you want to do twice for good measure, you can. Okay, so here is your text block. You can manipulate it a little and you see it sort of makes like this ladder pattern here that goes to sewing supports. And as you can see, mine are uneven. I've got much more here on this side. So you just hold your book in one hand and you can pull the other side until they're even. And you can also knock the spine to make sure the spine is flat. And yeah, this is the sewing support and the text block. And essentially, you kind of made a book here at this step. So if you want to stop here, you can. We are going to go one step further. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a cover.